Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you guys are. I hope you're having a fantastic day. It's all sitting here, and, well, Nut Fusion has arrived. We have a calendar. All right, so I wanted to talk to you guys, and you're going to get, like, a, a lot of different perspectives, and they're all valid. I think you take you take some, take what's good from any type of advice you can get, and then discard the rest. I always recommend that, right? But I did want to talk to some, uh, to, to some of you guys that are curious about what time frame or when would be the best time to implement, like, going and hitting uh, multiple... Uh, events at the same time, tournaments slash events at the same time, like what combinations work very, very well for you. Uh, in particular, uh, looking at this, we do have a really interesting um, set of like, I guess you could say splash of different champions because normally you'd have like a bunch of the same, uh, at least in my expansion so far, that there's like a bunch of the same rares that lead to like the same epics and that ultimately leads to the, the fusion you're trying to go for. Well, this one's a little bit different with, uh, with Newt. Uh, we have a... Uh, void rare set that we're gonna have to go out of our way to go and we'll talk about that in a minute as well as two different epics that we're gonna have to worry about too so that does change the dynamics of things right uh in terms of resources if you've been preparing for your fusion of course you want to try to have as many uh as much energy as possible available going into this as well as some additional resources whether that's food silver and maybe even potions which by the way we did come up with uh with a number uh crunch that was available for everybody and i want to go ahead and zoom in on this so you guys can kind of see it um, as of right now, there's only Force, uh, Force Affinity type rares that we're going to be going for, as well as maybe Epics, uh, and the same thing for Void, uh, Affinity Epics, and of course you're going to need the Arcane portion of Potions to get everything, but the total number that you're going to need is roughly 120 Lesser, 180 Greater, and, uh, 18 Superior Force, uh, Potions to get, get yourself through this event, uh, and that's for all of them. Uh, Void, on, on the Void side, we have 40 Lesser, 36 Greater, and 6 Superior. Now, in tandem with that, you're going to need Arcane Potions for both of those subsets, right? Um, so you're going to need like 80 Lessers, 108 Graders, and then 12 Superiors. So it's, it adds up. It adds up a little bit. And you do want to be a little bit careful for that uh, going into this particular event. Because if you don't have it, well, if you have some downtime in between these events where things are a little bit more easier. Uh, and we're going to talk about how you can do that. Um, it'll be very wise for you to consider maybe dipping a little bit over there. But, you know, true progression and true preparation would be that you already have everything you need. So... Uh, with that being said, uh, as it currently stands, this curse uh, the, we, we are in Monday, so we are starting on day one, and we do have a artifact enhancer, so this is more so on the silver side and the gear side of things, so plussing up gear um, and getting uh, things plus up to a point where you have enough to, to get the rare is pretty much what you're looking for, and then of course we have the spider tournament, which is a great place to get silver. And then, on top of to top it off, which is very different. Normally, we have the spider event very later on in the event, so they're really kind of switching up a lot of uh, a lot of like the traditional style of like you know schedules, what we're used to seeing. So it's a little different, but we do have a champion training tournament uh, uh, event going on right now as well. Now, I want I want you to kind of skip this right here for a second and show you into day two. So day two has a dungeon divers event that's also coming in as well. Um, when we're talking about like double dipping, triple dipping, and like quadruple dripping, you know, however you want to do it, like in terms of like how we're looking to min max resources, and, and I'm going to give you guys a perspective. And some people will be able to do this and some people won't. So we're going to kind of play with it with, with both mindsets in mind, right? So option number one is you can kind of quadruple dip. And the way that I'm going to kind of get a, get with saying this, is, or, or triple dip at the very least, uh, the way we're going to say about it is like uh, utilizing the currently active dungeon to facilitate farming for like your tra champion training. And what we mean is like, uh, there, there are various different teams out there. There are some that can do it at the hard stages. There's some that can do it at the normal stages. And this is all very dependent upon where you're at in the game. So if you don't have the most robust, uh, you know, solo uh, dungeon farmer for this particular spider area, then, you know, this may not be for you. But I did want to at least uh, approach it for, for people who are at that point in the game, right? So, like, there are some duo teams that may incorporate someone like Artek, for example, or uh, we'll go back down to, like, a little bit more of the OG side of things for the solo dra uh, the solo spider side of things, like uh, Akoth, you know, a, 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 a champion that you can acquire for uh, from Doom Tower to use as, a, as the 20 farmer, right? So what you would do is you would set up 20, 20, uh, your 20 camp, your 20 spider farmer and you know you'd have food with him and he would just basically do the contest so by doing spider uh you're facilitating the spider tournament while farming food within it you're also gaining champion training points right now some people would recommend that you would probably be uh it would probably be wise and i i also think this is the case too if your resources are, are allocated to a point where you know uh being able to do a lot in a in a specific window of time which would be ideal that's the ideal scenario then you want to go ahead and start you know just saving up and maybe only dip into like the artifact enhancement since that has no bearing on you doing anything actively like tournament wise or any dungeon specifically right 
Um, what I would do is like maybe day one, you're taking it a little bit easy. Maybe you're smoothing it out and you're grabbing, you know, the artifacts. You're doing your leveling if you had some spare silver left over. And you're, you know, you're basically enchanting and, and facilitating event number one. You're knocking that out right now, right? Day two, I would wait for dungeon divers if I had that solo farmer or, or that duo farmer team uh, with spider. And I would triple dip here where you're using like spider dungeon divers and champion training you're doing it all within the same turn every single time you're doing a, a, a dungeon farm so you're triple dipping in that regard now um if you're not able to do this i do recommend at the very least uh doing champion training right now during this day one period would probably be well, like opportune for you i would probably do that and then i would save the dungeon diver event for uh in the spider tournament event i would do those two in tandem with each other so like day two of the spider tournament or day one of the dungeon divers event when that comes up that's when i would double dip into those at the very least right so that you're getting points for both of these by just participating in the spider side but if you have the means to solo then of course you triple dip and you get you get all these points done at the same time and at that point you can kind of hit the ball running like earlier here whereas maybe waiting an extra and if you're really that fine and you know be that well off in terms of having really good energy to work with you can just wait and just do them all at the same time this champion training event goes for a long period of time and as a matter of fact, we're going to go ahead and switch over to the game, and I want to show you guys some points to, to just be aware of whenever you're making these decisions, right? So 2250 is what you're looking for in terms of acquiring at least the um, the uh, available rare that you can get. And, of course, your point allocation is going to be based off of what you acquire. So the better the quality, the better the rarity, the better the points you get, right? Uh, this is pretty much within the expectations. Around 2K to 2200 uh, is roughly about what you can expect, right? Now, um, we do have the Artifact Enhancement event, and that one has roughly around 4,700, uh, a little bit over, almost like up to 5,000 uh, 5, points that you're going to need for the uh, rare that you're going to need to acquire there. What some people do is, prior to this, they would level up some uh, some uh, accessories, some, some artifacts, and get them up to like maybe the 12, 13, 14 range, maybe even 15 range. And then on the day of these type of tournaments, they would pop it and immediately get their three, you know, 340 points that way. And they would just basically utilize uh, leftover pieces that are not available. At the end of the day, as long as you're using resources towards things that you are going to use, that you're going to keep, and maybe you'll see a long future. And that's probably the most ideal way that I go into it. Because then we're getting to like too much into the nuance of like, you know, how to uh, enchant artifacts, which ones are the right ones, which are the right ones. You know, basically do your due diligence, try to find the piece that you know you're going to be using across your champions. Like, the ones that I say, for those that use, like, the optimizer, if you see, like, a piece that's constantly being, like, proposed in, like, these hypothetical builds you're building, more often than not, that's a piece that's worth investing into. So, um, you know, try to keep eyes out for those as, well, as a good example, right? Uh, but in particular, when it comes to the champion training side, and this is where I want you guys to be aware, these numbers are a little bit more steeper. 7150 for the uh, epic is pretty, pretty steep. So, if you are one that's trying to like incorporate, uh, you know, not only using your reserve but also utilizing uh, champions, uh, you know, you know your daily regen that you would that you would get over time, getting the ball rolling early would probably be more opportune for you, if you especially if you're not like triple dipping into like the spire tournament, you're leveling that up at the same time. If you have to separate those two functions, then the best thing to do is day one start working towards champion training. Get to a healthy, satisfactory point where you have, you know, you're happy here, and then when the spider tournament comes up, then you you try to make some efforts towards uh, the spider and dungeon divers event. Now, that's not not that's not to say that like the dungeon divers event itself doesn't benefit from getting uh, pieces from like campaign. If you do twelve three farm, you still get them, but the the numbers are a little bit lower. So you know you want to min max your points and use them as a, as frugally as possible. Uh, option one is better than option two, but of course not everybody's there yet and we completely understand so with all that being said I want to make sure you guys are very very aware of like a way that you can prepare uh, Whether you are super efficient at spider uh, tournament or if you're partially efficient You know and what we mean by partially is like you're able to do the content But maybe not to a point where you have an extra room for you know some some food to also get cooked up with you, right? Now, moving into Thursday, we have a Classic Arena takedown as well as the Dragon Tournament. So, by this point, Spider's ending and Dragon's, uh, Dragon is starting. Now, Champion Training does go for a good period of time. In particular, for me, I actually benefit tremendously here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prioritize a little bit more on the Artifact side. And here's why. Uh, day one, I'm probably going to prioritize the Artifact and maybe casually do a little bit more of the Champion Training. Uh, while we wait for the Spider Dungeon Diver uh, duo portion of this fusion event to like dabble into when it comes to dragon tournament i have literally a day one full day here and if you combine the two here like basically halfway point if we assume it into the halfway point we have at least two days worth here i actually have a solo 
uh, dragon farmer that I can use that can do a lot of farming or duo in the harder dungeons. You know, like we have that option available for us, uh, in particular in my account. So I probably will dip a little bit more into champ training as well as um, the dragon tournament. And you could also triple take right there as well if you pay attention. So if you only can farm here, maybe do your artifacts, do spider, and then you triple dip right here when you're doing your dungeon divers, champion training, and dragon tournament. So just be on the lookout for like overlap. And that's basically what we're kind of getting at when it comes to scheduling is finding overlap where you can do multiple things within one series or one iteration of doing a stage content or doing a dungeon content whatever the content is you're, you're trying to push uh you know gaining more from doing that one particular stage and instead of just you know one here one here you can maybe combine those two by doing one in one area uh and that's what we're aiming for uh classic arena arena by far is one of the more easier sides of tournaments or or events to do so pretty much just actively being participant you pretty much have uh roughly like two to three days worth as long as these numbers aren't exponentially changed also to be a little bit more drastic as long as you're you know actively using your 10 that you get and whenever you get them on refill as well as like your daily five you get from you know dailies when we have reset that'll pretty much take care of itself as long as you're consistently working on it uh and utilizing your resources there you should be pretty much okay for the most part now we didn't talk about the summon rush as well. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put a caveat, and we're going to kind of jump a little bit with champion training too as well. Now, this event's a little different when we talked about how there's uh, different affinity rares and epics that we're going to have to go and acquire. Um, if you look inside the uh, fusion event, we need at least three of those epics that are force, and then one uh, void epic, right? So that means we need we need a little bit of everything, right? Normally, what they do is that it's all one, one rare type, one epic type, and summon rush would be you know, you get at least one rare, and then if you go further in terms of your summons, you'd also get a epic version uh, of the champion you need to fuse, right? Like, maybe an extra if you so choose to do all the content uh, for the fusion event calendar, or, um, you know, maybe you can drop some off since you since you got this particular uh, epic. Maybe you don't have to do the champion chase uh, event, or maybe some fire knight at the tail end, you know, because you already have that epic, right? Well, this scenario is a little bit different for, for Nuke because... Summon Rush only gets you one void for the the lower side, uh, or the rare, the rare grab. So this is probably going to be the one that's around like 2200, or uh, this is all speculation, mind you, but like the 2200-ish range, one, the 2150, somewhere around that range. And then the one that's higher would be like maybe the 5k or maybe even higher, 4900. Like it's basically going to be the harder to get one, right? Uh, this is actually a lot less promising in terms of what you're going to need because... Unless you want to get in a spare or you want to skip having to do some of the extra, like maybe you want to skip doing the Ice Golem tournament, the Fire Knight tournament, the Artifact Enhancement event, and then this takedown. Getting this right here will, will, will sufficiently suffice for this one. Whereas this particular event and this particular row right here, like these four, Summon Rush on Friday, the Champ Training event that starts, this is number two, on Sunday, July 9th, and then, of course, Dungeon Divers that starts on Wednesday, uh, July 12th, and Champion Chase on Friday 14th. These have to be done in order for you to get this event because there's no jump for you being able to acquire this Void Epic. There's no extra little thing you can do to get a spare version of him. And on top of that, too, in order to get him, you need four of these rares. So this right here is probably what makes or breaks your efficiency in terms of uh, being able to acquire new. Now, one way you could do this is unless you have either credit card currency, the wallet, you're whipping out the wallet to, to, to maybe buy some extra shards. Uh, but to be frugal, and this is the direction I'm going to go with in terms of my advice, would be you do at least the minimum to get the number one, uh, the number one champion that you can get, which would be the, the rare uh, fusion. Then you save your shards and stockpile until you get to the champion chase tournament and you start using your shards there a little bit more to secure getting the fourth and hopefully final uh rare void you need to get the epic that would probably be the more fortuitous option to do of course with champion chase events it's what you get not how you're you know using it to, to acquire it so you know maybe saving some of these to to pop during that event uh as well as maybe acquiring some extra feasible champions towards broad mall or relic keeper or even getting relic keeper and broad mall themselves those will add up as well as like fragment champions basically it's the act of acquiring it what you get specifically for champion chase that matters whereas summon rush is utilizing specific shards that uh you know the type of shards you're using it's not it doesn't matter what you get from here it's what you use to get it right and whereas like champion chase is what you get not what you use to get it so it's the exact opposite in terms of the, the inverse version of that so you know shards here are going to be a lot more prominent um in terms of like at least getting the the uh the baseline rare whereas like on the further side you're going to want to try to efficiently grab 
uh, specific type of rarity champion. So, like, trying to acquire legendaries is probably a lot more fortuitous. So, maybe instead of using your sacreds here, maybe use sacreds here. You know, that's an example, right? Now, mind you, uh, we just exited out of the ancient event. So, ancients are going to be a little bit less value in terms of like how much you get per points uh, in terms of summon rush. But the likelihood of you getting a, a legendary, unless you're at Mercy, would be where you would want to define how you're going to use your, your shards all willy nilly. But at the very least, of course, you know, uh, uh, Ancients and then uh, Voids and Sacreds, though, that's pretty much how the priority of like uh, how your point allocation is going to go for Summon Rush. So the higher you go, the better it is. Uh, whereas like Champion Chase, you want to play a little bit more around like, okay, maybe I'm close to use, like, utilizing maybe five or ten shards and I'm within range of like maybe having a potential pot because my Mercy's close on Ancients, right? That would be like a way you could strategically prepare yourself in addition to, you know, Fragment Champions or Fusion Champions that you have available to use during this period. Now, I did kind of skip around a little bit. We do have the Artifact Enhancement period uh, uh, right here and I'm going to kind of bounce back up here and another Dungeon Divers event. So... If you pay attention here, when you're doing your tra your dragon training, you'll also be doing Dungeon Divers number one. You'll have a little bit of an overlap there, as well as uh, dra uh, Dungeon Divers event here, uh, number two, towards the tail end of the uh, dragon tournament. So dragon tournament will be a way that you can double dip into not only one, but two Dungeon Divers. So that's where you can get some double dip there. Uh, in addition to that, too, we also have an artifact enhancement. So as you're you know, progressing through Spider and Dragon Tournament, you'll eventually sell whatever you don't want to keep, and you utilize that that resources as you replenish it uh, towards Silver, and the Silver towards Artifact Enhancement. So, basically, those are going to be a lot of in-synced uh, content periods, right? Now, uh, as you look further down, though, uh, Champion Training number two also overlaps for Dragon, so, like, towards the tail end here, you're also going to have some opportunity to maybe have some overlap and get some, some double dip there. But then it does fall off a little bit. You have, like, a maybe half a day's worth if I'm being, you know, critical about it, but maybe half a day to a day's worth of a reprieve in terms of dungeon content. Maybe during this period, if you're low on potions, maybe you do a little bit of potions while you throw in a couple of, you know, food champions to, to get some levels within champ training while, you know, maybe stockpiling here if you're if you so happen to not have enough potions. And believe me, we all go through it. So it's like there's no shame in the game. You know, you gotta you gotta find your moments of reprieve to get that little extra benefits. And I would say, you know, look for those type of moments, right? But we do hit Ice Golem Tournament, and there's going to be a period here where, depending on what you have, for example, Artek, again, being a free-to-play champion that everybody can acquire, has that capability of potentially soloing some of the harder content, as well as the, no as well as the normal content in terms of uh, the dungeons. So maybe dipping into this area would be a little bit more fortuitous for you to, you know, maybe do a double dip here. And even for that matter, you know, Ice Golem is still... Uh, starting when Dungeon Divers is still ongoing, so you can actually triple dip here. So, like, that's a little another another breakpoint where you can optimize maybe instead of utilizing your uh, your resources in one direction, you you kind of using one that spreads towards more, many different goals. So, um, as we follow up through uh, towards the tail end of Ice Golem, we have another Dungeon Divers event. So it seems like we're gonna have a lot of Dungeon Divers events, right? And maybe getting this epic is where you'll be able to like, okay, I don't need to go too ham. Once I get my my rare, I can you know. I can slow it down or because I'm not getting this, I do need to make sure I'm like, you know, tracking some areas where I can double dip or triple dip, right? Now, on the tail end of this, you do have the Ice Golem event where you're going to be able to participate into Dungeon Divers, but we are also going to have an overlap between Fire Knight and Ice Golem. So if you're finishing off Ice Golem, but Fire Knight's about to start and you haven't finished Dungeon Diver, you could just shift over to that dungeon to get the last little bit of Dungeon Divers finished as well as Fire Knight, you know, like basically you're just shifting where you can double dip everywhere else, right? Now, Champion Trace uh, is going to be dependent on how, you know, the type of champions you get and where you acquire them. So we're going to, we already kind of talked about that. Classic Arena is kind of similar to what you're looking at for the first one. That's going to be its own separate entities, doing your dailies, as well as, you know, keeping your general uh, arena medals down. Maybe even using some refreshes if you want to kind of power through it so you can kind of one and done it. Whatever your resources allow for you to do and you have the willingness to use it, then be careful with that. But for the most part, you got at least roughly two days worth to do this. Uh, stay on top of it because it can it can easily come and go and you miss something right uh, but for the most part maintaining at least uh, daily usage maybe keeping your metals down to zero so that when you regen up you know you're, you're acquiring stuff over time and you can use that as it as it replenishes and you're you're keeping a healthy state of progression and towards that takedown right uh, we're gonna end off here with basically dungeon divers and fire knight being the last little portion of it and that's very interesting but for the most part, the main thing is, is try to find little areas where you can kind of have some break points and just find uh, these areas where you can double dip and ideally triple dip if possible into like these different, uh, 
these different events that are happening at the same time. So I hope this helps you out. I hope this finds you in a in a in a, in a opportune state. This is a very very interesting champion. It's very, it's very hyped. And to be honest with you, based on what I've been hearing in terms of feedback on this champion behind the scenes, this is going to be a good one. So with all that being said, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to drop us a comment in the in the comment section. As well as I'm going to go ahead and say this and suggest this: join our Discord. There's a lot of conversation about ways to optimize going into you know this event. There's going to be different uh, difference of opinions, but we're all about with the mindset of like. This is what we think is going to be the best for everybody to fall through with. And you're going to have a lot of conversations. And you can spitball. Maybe maybe you can uh, get some advice about that Spider tournament. Maybe, like, you know, I'm close to maybe being able to do it a triple day. Maybe you guys can give me, like, a glance over it. And that may be available to you. So join our Discord. Uh, it's going to be in the description below. Uh, you know, click that link, follow through, and, and, and we'll look to have a great conversation with you there. And with all that being said, if you haven't already considered subscribing, go ahead and do that now too as well. Uh, we have recently jumped up into the upper 400, so we're looking to push into five and eventually a 1,000 subscribers. And I want to thank everybody that's been with me so far along the journey. And with all that being said, always, always remember, stay ascended.